Hi everyone, I'm just here really quickly to explain how to draw a cross section. I have another video on my channel about this, but there are a lot of complaints about the volume and not being able to understand me because I was literally teaching my class. So we're gonna draw a cross section based on this map. Um, the couple of things I need you to remember, these are contour lines around the edge. The contour lines represent height above sea level. So every single one of these lines is 10 metres above sea level. In Australia, everything is done in metres. Um, if we were to do this um, map based on Mount Everest, I think Mount Everest is 8,884 metres from memory. Um, so the map would actually go up to 8,884 metres. A couple of other things you need to remember, the further apart the lines are, the, um, the, less, the, the less the incline, so it's not going to be as steep. This side here, we're looking at probably a cliff because the lines are almost touching right here. So the closer the lines, the steeper it is, the further apart the lines, the flatter the land. The idea of going a cross section is so that you can see what this map looks like if you're actually standing up in front of the mountain and, and looking at it. It's to give us an idea of how, what the shape of the land is. So I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna just show you what we're gonna do. So to draw this, this cross section, we're gonna do it from point B through to point Y. So the first thing we need to do is we need to establish point B and point Y on the map. And we're going to draw a little line. And then we're going to prop a piece of paper up against that line. And every single time one of your contour lines hits your piece of paper, I just want you to mark it. So go along and every single time. When they're really close together, it is going to look incredibly messy, but that's okay. You don't get marked on this piece of paper. So we've got these dots here. And the next thing we need to do is we need to have a look at the number that's associated with that line that you just attached to your piece of paper. So we can see we started at B, so that is going to be 80 metres. Then we're going to go here and that's going to be 90 metres because the contour interval is 10 metres. That one then loops across, that will be 90 metres and then we're going to drop down to 80 metres. So straight away we know we're going up a mountain here on the west side of the mountain, we're going across the top of the mountain and then we're going to start heading back down the mountain. Here, on your piece of paper, you've got really close together lines, but you need to be aware that they loop around. So 70, 60, 50, this one here that's 50, it's gonna go up here. That's gonna be 50 at that point on your piece of paper. But then on this point here, that's gonna be 50 as well because it loops around. So be really aware when you're marking it here. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna go 80, 90, Gonna go across it's 90 again then we're going to go down to 80 and you can place it on there if you need to and keep checking you can do this as you go but keep checking and if you need to do this to see which line it's on do it but then see it loops back to 40. So 40 and then it loops back to 40, which means it's going back to 50. And then we jump to 70. So 40, 50, and we jump to 70. 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, and then we end up at 10. Okay, so now we've got this and it's really messy here, but that's okay because you're probably not going to have to turn in this piece of paper. So the next thing we do is you'll be probably given a blank graph. All right, so you'll probably be given something like this. If you have to fill in the y-axis, which is the height, okay, measure how many centimeters you've got along the side. I have 10 centimeters along the side. And if you look here, the contour interval is 10 meters. And the highest the number the highest number on this map is this trig point here. So the spot height is 96 metres. 
So that means round it up 100 metres. So you can put a measurement of 10 metres along here. All right, you don't have to start it at 10. If you're doing, say, Mount Everest, your map might start at 7,000 metres. So you might need to start at 7,000 and jump in 50s or 100s or 500s. Have a look at your map. The next thing we do is we place this piece of paper down. Now, one way to tell if you've done the right section is does your piece of paper fit in the space that you've been provided? If you suddenly have a number all the way over here, then you might have stuffed up somewhere. So just make sure it fits in the space you've been provided. Okay, so now we're marking it on a map. So we're marking it on our table. So we go up to 80. Now you can do this, you can freehand it if you want, you can pretend to draw a line, or if you are really one of those people that likes things very organized, you can use a, a ruler. So I tend to do it this way because I find it easier. So I tend to turn my map and I do it like this. So I've marked 90, I'm marking 80. And you literally from the point that you drew that little tiny mark. So in this case, they're all gonna be super close together here. That's when we jumped. We went 40 again, and then we went up to 50. Then we jumped to 70. Okay. So it looks like this. So please don't use your ruler to draw the lines because mountains are not dead straight. So we literally just draw it like this. Okay, sorry, that went like that. Had a little dip there, a little uh, repeat on itself. Um, and that's your cross section, okay? That's all you have to do, that's your cross section. Just one thing I wanted to point out, just say here there was like a random river going through there, okay? And on your piece of paper, you were like, oh, there's a river, a, a, you know, a, a, ribbon, a river going through here. What you do on your piece of paper is you would just put a point. So if there's a natural phenomena, you just put a point there. And then down here at that point, you mark it again and then you just say river, or if the river has a name, give it the name, and that's all you do. I'm going to um, do another one about um, things that we can do with cross sections, but I just wanted to give that real general quick, that's how you draw a cross section.